others. I don't want to say all the names. I might forget some and people will get upset. Uh, my name is Hussein Abdullah and I'm the, uh, I'm the director of uh, Americans for Democracy and Human Rights in Bahrain. It's an NGO in uh, Washington, D.C. <clears throat> Thank you for coming to this timely and important panel discussion sponsored by the Al Salam Foundation and co-sponsored by the International Federation for Human Rights, FIDH, the World Organization Against Torture, OMTC, and Redress, titled Failure to Reform and Examination of Bahrain's UPR Recommendation. This, events, this event also being held in coordination with Americans for Democracy and Human Rights in Bahrain. Today's panel discussion on Bahrain's implementation of its Universal Periodic Review, UPR, comes on the heels of the release of the US, United States State Department country report on human rights practices for 2013. Violence or the loss of government of Bahrain often tries its efforts and there is no doubt including that the window of opportunity to undertake the president's building measures and session of the meaning of the down last week in which he stated he that Bahrain worked for the international Bahrain defense and hate has worked for southern Africa and has been resolved to implement the recommendations of the Bahrain Independent Commission of Inquiry, BICI, in the report, the report confirmed what ADHRB and many of today's panelists have been saying since the BICI that there is a human rights crisis in Bahrain that need to be urgently addressed. To quote the State Department report directly, the most serious human rights problem include citizens' inability to change their government peacefully, arrest, detention of protesters on vague charges, in some cases leading to their torture and detention and lack of due process and trial of political and human rights activists. Medical personnel, teachers, and students with some trial resulting in harsh sentences." End quote. The issues plaguing Bahrain run for far deeper than what it is normally reported in the mainstream media. That is solely between the government and the opposition, or the result of sectarian division. A study of the 158 Universal Periodic Review recommendations that the government of Bahrain accepted in October of 2012 demonstrates otherwise. They, are, they range from addressing the treatment of detainee to the need for changing the way the social services are administrated to ensure that all Bahrainis have equal access to them. Indeed, they also reflect many of the demands that spurred the protest in February 2011, including calling on the government to address the culture of impunity, and move toward the rule of law. The bombing that resulted in the death of three police officers in Bahrain earlier this month only serves to underscore the urgent need for a negotiated solution in the country. Any act of violence or loss of life in Bahrain is a tragedy, and there is no doubt that the window of opportunity to undertake confidence-building measures and to implement meaningful reform is growing narrower. The member states present at the Human Rights Council are in a unique position to change the, tra the trajectory in Bahrain from escalation to de-escalation. In addition to encouraging the Bahraini government to meet its international human rights obligation and submit to a mid-review of its 2012 UPR recommendations, member states can make public statement on their concern regarding the situation on the ground and possibility of continued escalation, as well as push for international human rights bodies such as NGOs and relevant UN special procedures to be allowed access into the country. It is important to note that Special Rapporteur on Torture tried to visit the country three times. Two times his, cancel, his visit was canceled. A coalition in the UN willing to engage Bahrain exists and is growing. But leadership from the United States in pressuring the Bahraini government to uphold its human rights obligation and shift the momentum in the country back toward the stability will be critical. It is the key actor that other countries will look to when considering action on Bahrain. It is my hope that matter that it is my hope that member states of the of the Human Rights Council will play a constructive role in ensuring a growing tension, easing a growing tension in Bahrain. I'm now pleased to introduce today's esteemed panelists who will discuss the Bahraini government progress toward implementation of their 2012 UPR recommendation and provide an update on the status of human rights and civil society in the country. 
Our first panelist will be Michael Payne, is the Advocacy Associate at Americans for Democracy and Human Rights in Bahrain. As the Advocacy Associate, Mr. Payne coordinates ADHRB's research and report writing efforts, develop new uh, advocacy initiative, and serve as a primary liaison with ADHRB's NGO and think tank partners to, ad to advance support for democracy and human rights in Bahrain. He received his bachelor degree with honors in international relations from Knox College with a focus on development political movement in the Middle East. Julie Gromlin is the representative to the United Nations for the International Federation for Human Rights, FIDH. She studied international law and political science at the University of Pantheon Sorbonne in Paris. Prior to joining FIDH, she worked for two years for doctors in the world in the DRC as a program officer. Specializing in children and women rights issues, she has been actively involved in major standard setting processes at the international level in the field of protection of human rights at the UN level, specifically in the context of UN Human Rights Council and other UN bodies. Next, Kevin Louis is a human rights lawyer and the legal advisor for Redress. He practiced law in Zimbabwe from 1984 to 2002 and co-founded Zimbabwe Lawyer for Human Rights in 1996. Mr. Louis, originally from South Africa, attended Natal University where he graduated with a bachelor degree with honors. He has previously worked for the International Defense and Aid Fund for Southern Africa and has been with Redress, redress since 2002, and he'll be joining us through Skype or via Skype. Mr. Mohammed Al Tajer uh, is a prominent Bahraini human rights lawyer. He has worked with more than 25 lawyers to represent human rights defenders and political activists who had been detained in Bahrain in early 2011. He was arrested by Bahraini police officers and was held in, con in, com in uh, communicado detention with no access to his lawyer or family for more than five weeks. When he was brought to trial, he was faced with charges that included publicly inciting hatred of the government in Bahrain and spreading malicious news and propaganda. Last but not least, Ms. Nidal Salman is the head of women and children rights for Bahrain Center for Human Rights. Ms. Salman began her career as an academic and later became human rights activist, focusing on the participation of women and children in human rights issues. She was the only NGO representative in the July 2013 CEDAW pre-session and represented BCHR in the recent 2014 CEDAW meeting. Mr. Salman is a member of the regional group against sexual harassment, the Arab Women Network, and women living under Muslim law. Before we begin, I just want to uh, bring to your attention that this event is being live streamed, and the, the, the site for that was tweeted under BIRD's account, B-I-R-D, and under ADHRB. So if you want to spread it, please uh, uh, feel free. Mike, would you like? 